going to learn four uh, teachings that the Satmar Rav Zechim and Rocha had in the Rayo, had in the Rayo, uh, about the fight of Yaakov Avinu with the Sarishal Esav, with the angel, which sages tell us, Rashi tells us, was, was the Satan, was the Satan, the, the prince of, of the nation of Esau of Elam. First teaching, this is this. The fight that Jacob had with, with the angel uh, of evil, with the angel of Esau. Jacob, our patriarch, he saw his prophetic view and then also his holy sons, the, the, the founders of the twelve tribes, also understood this. That they saw in the future, the end times, that there would be a generation in which the, those who serve God would be less and less. And there will only be leftover individuals that are going to fight with their, with their souls against those who are trying to drive them away from the Holy Torah. said the following, Who is he? 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 Who is of the of the shots in Machshemay, of shops uh, Tzvi, most of the world were following in his evil. Were, were were his followers. Most of the Jewish world went along and, and followed him. And there were only, uh, or at least, they were thinking maybe he could be. There were doubts. There were only very few individuals that fought against him. So the holy Yaivetz, Rabbi Yaakov Emden, he writes that he was afraid that there might be another group, another sect, like the sect that followed Shabbos Tzvi, the false messiah, that there would be another such sect. So the Yaakov uh, Emden said, if you're the only person in the world, he wrote for future generations, another group comes like this, fighting against the truth of God's word, and it doesn't matter, you're the only one left in the world, don't give up. There's a, there's a possibility that God is going to help you. Don't go away from the truth of God's word. The Rebbe says that this is unfortunately almost what's happening in our days. Aren't there still a few individuals that are fighting for the truth? But for most of the Jewish people, totally, unfortunately, total away from the truth of God's word. In Kane Ose Shvotam Akadoshim Yanka Vina Poil, the Mirani Gachina Derch. Jacob saw this, his son saw this, and so they accomplished, they put in an effort to accomplish, to make a path for us to exist, that we shouldn't be exterminated. Shiichli, the Skav of Lava, the Kishri, Melchemus Yezer, the Samachman, the Philok Shiichit. They made it to the, to the person could stand up and fight against the Yetzirah, fight against the Satan, fight against the Samach Mem. Even an individual don't need an army. It could just be one person. Meaning, the sons of Jacob specifically allowed their father to be alone when they passed over the, the, the river uh, Yabok, and Yaakov Inu, Yavos and Yankov Levadai, Yavoy Kishimai Adelaise Shachar, that meaning they left Jacob by himself, 
So that to prove that even an individual can fight against the angel of evil, even you're all by yourself, you can also fight, can also be successful, can also be victorious. Even you're all alone. That since Jacob, this happened to him, he fought against the son of Chimam and he was able to conquer him. Also, with what he accomplished by himself, not only he proved, but he also accomplished that we should have that power, that strength, that energy. in the future generations. And so he placed the potential energy into all of his future generations that they too could fight against the Samach Mem, even if they're by themselves. And, and so he brought salvation to those future generations in this battle with this angel. He made it easier for us, for them, for the future generations, for us to fight and to stand up under any test and to stand even all by ourselves we could wage war against the Satan. We don't need an army. That's what Jacob said. That's one teaching. It's in the second volume of uh, of of Tivrayol. Uh, it's page Reish um, Memtes. Another teaching, the same idea. This on on the uh, page Kuf Nun, the Kipshute called the very shlich a shlichus v'dar and chlikus a machnus haya kol hacham and pkiisha soy im aisiv. A similar teaching, uh, uh, part of what the uh, Rebbe says in the uh, also in the second uh, volume of the very old on page Kuf Nun, the Rebbe says it. Uh, Simply, we're thinking, Jacob, he went out to get everything ready to, to meet Esau, to meet Esau, his brother. It was to meet physically with his brother Esau. When he set up, he gave him gifts, he prepared with prayer, prepared with war. Pashas Aksuba Maram King. Simple meaning of the scripture would seem to indicate that Jacob was going to meet with the physical brother Esau. But in the innermost depths of what the scripture is telling us, the Rebbe tells us, is that this scripture is telling us. That what, he's, uh, that what Jacob was preparing for below was also hinting towards above. Everything, all the actions, all the words that Jacob did, as mentioned in this parsha, in parsha Yishlach, he sent the angels and he got ready for war. It was not really to prepare to meet with a physical person, with his brother Esau, but rather to meet with Esau's prince, with the angel, the angel, the Satan, the Samach Mem. Because he knew that this angel, the Satan, was coming to fight against Jacob. And so that's what Jacob got ready for. So this, we see what Rebbe was telling us, is that it wasn't just that, it teaches us a general idea, is that whenever we're preparing for this world, we really have to be preparing for things that are above and beyond. That's a, something we have to realize. It's not only a physical war we're fighting, we're also fighting a spiritual war. We can't be blinded to that. We have to be aware of what we're getting into. A short teaching that's in the, in the second volume, once again, on page Reish Samach Gimel.